Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be giving you my top 10 films of 2021. I apologise for the lateness of this video. I know I probably should have done it at the end of the year or at least at the beginning of this year. But I just had so many films that I wanted to catch up on and I wanted to watch as many as I could before making this top 10. But I can confidently say now that I think I'm pretty happy with my list. And yeah, I will go through it now. So just before I get into the top 10, I just want to do some honourable mentions. So these are films that didn't quite make the top 10, but I still really enjoyed them regardless. And I think overall they deserve a shout out. So I'd just like to go through a few of these. So the first one is The Matrix Resurrections. Now I know this is probably gonna be a contra controversial one for a lot of people, because I know a lot of people didn't like this film. I actually really enjoyed it. I was quite surprised at the direction it took with the story. I like the sort of the meta self-aware uh, kind of direction that it took. And I was I was totally on board with it. I, I was happy to return to this world. I thought the action sequences in the film were great. I liked that it didn't really pander to the fan service. And that's possibly one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't like this film. But overall, I really enjoyed it and it was one of the big surprises of the year for me. Next honourable mention is King Richard, starring Will Smith. Uh, Yet yeah, this is a sports uh, biographical film about Richard Williams and his two daughters, Serena and Venus, who are obviously two of the most well-known, most successful female tennis players of all time. And yeah, this is just a really, really good drama. Um, if you like your dramas, sports dramas, then yeah, it's a pretty good film. Um, it's got a good message on, you know, triumphing against the odds and, you know, to just never give up uh, despite uh, the struggles that you may have. And yeah, it's just a really good, uplifting movie and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, that's King Richard. Next honourable mention is Lamb. So this is a Icelandic horror movie, sort of. And all I can really say about this film is it is bizarre. It's surreal. It's weird. Um... There's no other way to say it, it's just a very, very strange film. But I like the fact that this film just rolled with the concept and it had the audacity to do it. And yeah, I, I'm a big fan of films that are kind of weird and have that sort of that Cronenberg, Lynchian kind of tone to them. And yeah, I really like this film. It was atmospheric, kind of haunting in a strange kind of way. Uh, I like the Icelandic locations used in the film, and yeah, it's just a very strange and absorbing horror film. Uh, but it didn't quite make the top 10, but I still really enjoyed it. Next honourable mention is Nightmare Alley, directed by Guillermo del Toro. And yeah, this is a film that I, when I went into this film, well, I went into this film not knowing anything about the plot. And as I was watching the film, I still didn't know what this film was about, and... It just, I was I was kind of wondering, when is this film going to get to the point? And for the longest time, it didn't. And I was actually kind of ready to give this film kind of a low score. But once it got to the ending, I finally got the film. And I really liked how the plot kind of came full circle. And it actually saved the movie for me. And I can totally appreciate this film now. And I know when I go to revisit this film... I will have a much better appreciation for it. I know some people may not like the sort of the meandering slow pace of the film and the plot does unfold very, very slowly. And I know some people probably are not going to be a fan of that. But if you can stick to it, uh, I think it's a very rewarding film by the end. Next honourable mention is Spencer. So yeah, this is obviously another biographical film about uh, Princess Diana and um, during sort of the, the latter part of her um, time with uh, Prince Charles. Uh, yeah, I knew this film was going to be a bit of a depressing one, a bit of a miserable experience, and I can't really argue with that. It is quite a miserable movie. Um, it's not one that I will probably ever want to watch again, but I really appreciated it for the plot because I think it had a lot of important themes and um, I like the fact that it kind of delved into sort of Diana's uh, mental health issues and the anxieties she had uh, being a part of the royal family and the film kind of puts you in her shoes and makes you feel her anxieties and I did really appreciate the film in that sense. 
Um, like I say, it's probably not a film I'm going to want to revisit anytime soon, but um, I can still really respect the movie. And Kristen Stewart is fantastic in the film. What, an, what a performance um, as Princess Diana. And the last honourable mention is Titan or Titan. Uh, yeah, this is a French body horror film. If you like your sort of your David Cronenberg, uh, maybe sort of David Lynch kind of stuff, you like your French um, horror um, thriller type movies, then this will definitely be for you. Um, it's it's kind of hard to describe this movie, but all I can say is go into it not knowing much, and if you can get on board with it, then I think you'll really appreciate it. And I did like this movie, but it just um, misses out on the top 10. Right guys, on to my top 10 now. So in 10th place, I'm going to go with Pig, starring Nicolas Cage. So yeah, this is a film where he plays a truffle farmer with a pet pig, and his pig uh, gets kidnapped, and he basically decides to go after it and get it back. Um, I know some people think this film is going to have a kind of a John Wick kind of vibe, but that's not the case at all. And I actually, when I went into this film, for about the first half, I wasn't really enjoying it and I just wasn't getting it. But once it got into the second half, it, it suddenly came to life. And I don't really want to give away too much, but the end of the movie is quite, quite, um, quite sad in a way. Um, and Nicolas Cage's performance is just fantastic. It's one of um, his best in a very, very long time. And yeah, I know that when I go back to this film, I I know that I'm going to enjoy it a lot more. It was just kind of getting over that first hurdle uh, in the beginning of the movie where it was kind of slow and maybe a little bit like Nightmare Alley and that it kind of meandered a little bit and I didn't really know where it was going. But once I knew where it was going, I could totally appreciate this movie. So yeah, that's Pig at number 10. At number 9, I'm going to go with Belfast, directed by Kenneth Branagh. And this is kind of a almost like a story of his life. Um, I know he took a lot of influence from um, his his days as a young boy in Belfast in the uh, 1960s. And yeah, I overall, I really liked this film. Um, it's kind of like a drama film that I know I'm probably not, not going to revisit that much, but I um, took a lot of appreciation from this movie. And it's just kind of a, um, a very character-driven, very story-based drama set in Belfast um, about a family who who live there during some of the troubles that are happening there. And they kind of, they want to move on for a better life, but then at the same time, they don't want to, they don't want to um, leave their roots. And yeah, it's just a, a really, really strong, powerful movie. And overall, I really liked it. So yeah, that's Belfast at number nine. At number eight, I'm going to go with The Green Knight. So going into this film, I I wasn't really looking forward to it because I'm not the biggest fan of like medieval movies, med medieval action films and things like that. But once I started this film, within the first five minutes, I knew this film was going to be something completely different. Um, and boy, was it. Um, it kind of, I, it kind of felt like hereditary in medieval times. Not quite to the same extent, but just the kind of the atmosphere that it conveyed and just the overall t uh, tone, the, the sort of the haunting um, underlying nature of the story. And I know some people have issues with the pacing of this film. It is quite long and it is quite slow, but um, I really liked a lot of this movie. I liked the, the, the atmosphere, like I've said. And I like the, the some of the creepy visuals. I think overall this film is kind of creepy in places. And yeah, I really liked it. And I I think uh, when I come to rewatch it, I will like it even more. So yeah, that's The Green Knight at number eight. At number seven, I'm going to go with The Tragedy of Macbeth. So this is a film directed by Joel Cohen, who is uh, best known for being one half of the Cohen brothers. Um, and... Yeah, I was very excited when I heard this film was being made because um, I love the Coen brothers and the Macbeth story is my favourite Shakespeare story. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I like the visual style it had. Um, there's some very um, striking visuals in this film, particularly the scenes involving the witches. 
Um, the performances in this film are great. Denzel Washington is great. Frances McDormand is a fantastic Lady Macbeth. She just, she's brilliant in the role, but she's always brilliant. Um, and yeah, um, it, it looked, the film looks like um, it was, it, it looks like you're watching a play on screen because all of the, the film is like on sets. There's no actual locations used in the movie. It's as far away as, say, the Roman Polanski version of the film as you can get. And yeah, I really, really liked this film. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna call it a Coen Brothers film, it's definitely up there for one of their best, in my opinion. But yeah, that's the tragedy at Macbeth at number seven. So in sixth place, I'm going to go with Spider-Man No Way Home. So this one was quite a surprise for me because admittedly, I'm not the biggest fan of the MCU. I grew up loving Marvel. I grew up loving Spider-Man. Um, I have great nostalgia for the Tobey Maguire films. Was never the biggest fan of the Garfield films, but I still appreciated them for what they were. And yeah, um, I just I had to watch this film just because of the hype regarding it. But I was not really expecting to like it. But yeah, I really did like this movie. It's a really solid comic book film. Um, without giving too much away, all the sort of the characters that show up in the film are fantastic and it's great to see a lot of the villains again. Um, I think this is probably Tom Holland's best uh, portrayal as Spider-Man. I think his previous two films were okay in my opinion, um, but I feel like this is the film where he finally sort of embodies the role and you know really uh, takes it upon himself to give such a fantastic performance and yeah it's just a really fun comic book movie and definitely one of the best that i have seen from the mcu so yeah that's spider-man no way home at number six in fifth place i'm gonna go with the harder they fall so yeah this is a western movie um that it's basically just a western revenge film and sometimes i think these are films that you just can't beat a film like this um if you like a good western if you like a good revenge movie then this will do it for you. I like that this film kind of uh, takes it back and it feels like a old, good old fashioned spaghetti western, um, but it also has that modern sort of Tarantino um, vibe to it. But the film also reminded me a lot of a South Korean western called The Good, The Bad and The Weird. And if you haven't checked that film out, then I would implore you to, because it is such a fun movie. But yeah, anyway, The Harder They Fall is just great. Um, it's got really compelling protagonists. It's got villains that you love to hate. And yeah, just a really, really good, solid revenge film. And sometimes that's all you need. And the action in this film is really good. And overall, I really, really enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see it again. But yeah, that's The Harder They Fall at number five. So in fourth place, I'm going to go with Coda. So this is a film that I feel like maybe not a lot of people have seen this one. I feel like it's kind of fallen under the radar. But again, this is another film that is just a very, um, very, very solid drama. It's about a, a girl who lives with her family. She's in high school. Um, she has a mum, her dad and her brother. And they are all deaf and uh, mute, I think, as well. And she is the only one of the family who is not deaf. And um, it's kind of about her trying to get through high school, applying for college, but then she's always kind of, her family always have to rely on her because um, she's essentially their interpreter and the family can't really do anything without her. And it kind of, it goes through her struggles of trying to maintain her high school life and then also this other life with her family. And yeah, I, I thought this was just a really sweet, uplifting movie with amazing performances by everyone. I like the fact that they used actual deaf actors to play the rest of the family. Um, it's got um, a very musical theme. Uh, I'm really into my music, so I really appreciated the, the musical theme of the plot because she's, she wants to move on to go to Berklee College of Music, a very prestigious mu music school. But obviously she has these struggles of trying to get there. And yeah, I really, really liked this film. And it's just a really great drama. But yeah, that is Coda at number four. So in third place, I'm going to go with Last Night in Soho. And yeah, I have to give um, I have to give it to Edgar Wright. Um, this was a fantastic film, a fantastic horror movie. I, I don't really 
need to say much about this movie because I think a lot of people in the community have already talked about how much they love this film and I can only agree it's just a really really well made well acted um, creepy film uh, some very creepy visuals in it great use of music some of the production techniques are fantastic um, all the scenes in the 60s the aesthetic of them is just great and yeah overall it's just a really really great very very scary horror movie and yeah i can't say much more than that it's fantastic yeah that is last night in soho at number three so in second place i'm going to go with tick tick boom uh starring andrew garfield so yeah this is a film uh, another biographical drama about um a guy i forget the character's name but he's um he's trying to get his first broadway musical produced um but he's having a lot of difficulties getting it done and it kind of just goes goes through his life and the struggles he has trying to get this Broadway musical produced. And yeah, it's just a fantastic movie. I loved this film from start to finish. Andrew Garfield's portrayal, well, his performance in the film is brilliant. And I would like to give him the nod for the Best Actor um, award um, for the Oscars. But we'll see how that goes. Um, the story, again, is just a very uplifting one and, you know, has a good message on, you know, um, never giving up on your dream no matter where you are in your life. Um, again, it's got a very strong musical theme, which is very important to me. The music in the film is just fantastic. And yeah, I can't really say much more than that. It's just a really good, solid drama and one that I would be more than happy to give a rewatch and hopefully I do very soon. But yeah, that is Tick Tick Boom at number two. Right guys, so we're on to my number one pick of the year. And I was quite torn between this film and Tick Tick Boom. But I think overall this movie is one that I think I will um, come back to quite a lot. And it's also by a director who I just love. And it is Paul Thomas Anderson's Licorice Pizza. So yeah, this is kind of a, a coming of age movie about a 15 year old boy who falls in love with a girl who is 10 years older than him. And he's he's this boy who is aspiring to great things and he's growing up too fast. But then you have this girl who is, you know, she's older than him, but she kind of wishes she could go back to her days as being more carefree and almost more childish. So these two characters just kind of form a bond and a relationship and it kind of goes from there. And yeah, it's just a really, really good entertaining funny drama um i like the performances in it i like the 70s aesthetic uh in california um yeah like i said it's very funny it's very sweet um and if you know paul thomas anderson you know it's kind of got this underlying darkness to the story as well i'm not saying this movie is anywhere near his other films like boogie nights magnolia and there will be blood but it's still a really, really enjoyable film. And yeah, I have to give it to him. He's he's a fantastic director and he always churns out fantastic films. And yeah, for me, I can't see any other film better this year. So yeah, my number one pick of the year is Licorice Pizza. So there you go, guys. Those are my top 10 films for the year 2021. What's your top 10 of the year? Do you agree or disagree with my list? Please let me know in the comments below because I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you'd like to see my entire ranking of every film that I watched from 2021, then you can find it in my letterbox profile. So I will leave a link in the description below for you to have a look at that and see what you think. But yeah, uh, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. So I will leave it there. So until next time, guys, take care and see you all very soon.